Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Which story are you going to tell me today, Uncle? Inshallah, I'll tell you the story of the Prophet's wife Khadija radhiyallahu taala anha. Mashallah, that is amazing. Please tell me the story, Uncle. Yes, Abu. I'll start now. The story of Khadija radhiyallahu taala anha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Khadija al Kubra. daughter of Khuwailid bin Asad bin Qusay belonged to the clan of Banu Hashim of the tribe Banu Asad according to many sources Khadija was born in 565 AD and died 11 years after the Hijra which took place in 623 AD Khadija grew up in Makkah and she got married to a merchant called Abu Hala bin Zurura they had two sons called Hind and Hala Her husband didn't live long and he died after she gave birth to their sons After the death of her husband she got married to another merchant named Atiq bin Aid They had a daughter and named her Hind but this marriage too didn't last for long Her second husband passed away soon Khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha belonged to a rich family and she inherited the wealth of her husband as well. She performed good deeds with her wealth. She was not only wise but she was very good in conducting business. She started handling their family's trading business herself. She would buy goods and do business with traders in Yemen and Syria. Since she was a woman, she couldn't travel to these distant lands. She hired people to do this job for her. People from far away lands traveled to Yemen through Makkah. Many of these travelers took halt in Makkah for food and rest. They used to set up temporary shops in the market and trade their goods with other merchants. One day, Abu Talib, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was sitting in the market. He overheard two men discussing about Khadija. They talked to each other about the news of Khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha looking for a new man to assist her in business. It was a well-known fact that Khadija paid her men more than anyone else. Abu Talib who overheard this thought about his nephew. He wanted the young prophet to learn business so that he could look after himself prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had grown into a young man by now he was liked by everyone for his good character and wisdom that he received the title al amin which meant the faithful abu talib met the prophet and asked him to meet khadija for the job the prophet didn't want to be a burden on his uncle's family who were already struggling so he agreed to meet khadija for the job abu talib really wanted his nephew to get the job so he decided to meet khadija himself first he went to her house introduced himself and said my nephew is called al amin by people in makkah he is looking for a job i heard you are hiring someone for your caravan It would be great if you can hire him. Khadija knew Abu Talib and she had heard good things about the young prophet. I have heard about your nephew. I would be happy to hire him. Ask him to come and meet me tomorrow. The prophet met Khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and she immediately hired him. She made him in charge of a trade caravan to Syria. Prophet was very happy to work for her. He was only 25 years old and full of energy. He was confident of doing good business for his master. This was not the first time that the prophet was traveling to Syria. He had been there once with his uncle Abu Talib. He was just 12 years old then and he had been there to sell some of his uncle's merchandise. But things were different now. He was made in charge of the whole team. He knew that he had to take good care of the merchandise and use his skills to make good profit. 
Khadija knew that Prophet was young and there were chances that people would take advantage of his inexperience. To aid him, she sent her trusted servant Maisara along with him. The journey from Makkah to Syria took several days to complete and tested the strongest men. At first, they travelled under the scorching sun through the desert. Once they crossed the desert, they now had to travel through forests for many days. And after many days of travel, they finally reached Syria. The market in Syria was much bigger than the one in Makkah. There were traders everywhere. The place had changed much since the Prophet's last visit. Masara soon found a spot for the camels under a tree. They tied their camels, unpacked their goods and put them up for display. Soon they were surrounded by curious merchants who came to see what they are selling. Prophet and Masara sold all their goods in no time. The Prophet had bargained for the best price for all his merchandise. Once they had enough money with them, Prophet decided to take a walk in the market. He was amazed at the quality of goods they were selling in the market. People came from all over, Turkey, China, India and many other places to sell their goods. He knew that these goods would get excellent price if taken back to Makkah. The Prophet talked to the traders and got excellent price for the goods they sold. They loaded their caravans with goods and left from Syria. They had made good profits and they also had many goods that would get excellent profit in the markets of Makkah. The people of Makkah were amazed to see the caravan loaded with goods. They wondered what were in those bags. The Prophet handed over all the money he had made by selling her goods in Syria. He also handed over all the goods he had brought from there. Khadija was, was surprised. Prophet had made double the profits than anyone before him. He had also brought many merchandise as well. She knew that this was all because of his excellent character. When the Prophet left, she called Mesara and asked him how the Prophet behaved. He praised the Prophet. I have never seen anybody more honest and more trustworthy than Muhammad Khadija gave Prophet additional responsibilities and he performed those much to her satisfaction. As days went by, she was more and more impressed by the Prophet's character. One day, Khadija anha was talking to her friend. I have never met such a good man. This is for the first time that I have made so much profits and it's all because of him. I think I'm very lucky to have hired the nephew of Abu Talib. Her friend agreed with her. Yes, you are very lucky. I think you should marry him. He's a good man and you are a widow. You like him so much too. It was then that Khadija ta'ala anha thought about this. Yes, you're right. It is a good idea. Can you ask him if he is willing to marry me? The next day, Khadija's friend met the Prophet. Why are you not yet married? She asked him straight away. I don't have the means for supporting a family, the Prophet replied truthfully. What if you are let off from taking that responsibility? She asked him. How is that possible? Asked the Prophet. What do you think of Khadija? She asked. I hold her in great esteem. She is a wise, pious and a kind woman. He replied. What if she would like to marry you? She asked him. The Prophet was surprised. He respected Khadija a lot for giving him work but the thought of marriage never occurred to him. I'll give you an answer after talking to my uncle, he said. When the Prophet told his uncle about the proposal, Abu Talib was very happy. 
He knew that Khadija was a good woman and he was so happy for his nephew. The Prophet informed his uncle's approval to Khadija anha, and they got married to each other very soon. For the first few days, Prophet and Khadija anha lived at Abu Talib's house. Soon, they shifted to a very large house. The Prophet and Khadija lived together in their new house happily. Khadija handed over all her business to her husband. Prophet used her wealth wisely and soon he became one of the richest man in Makkah. Khadija anha gave birth to six children, two boys and four girls. However, both the boys died when they were still infants. They named the daughters Zainab, Ruqayya, Umm Kulsum and Fatima. They grew up into young and beautiful girls. Years went by, but there were many questions that kept arising in his mind every now and then. He often went on top of Mount Hira from where he could see the whole of Makkah. Most of his doubts were the same as what Prophet Ibrahim salam. He wondered who created this world and how the humans were created. He thought about his purpose in this world. He wondered what would happen once he died. He gazed at the stars and kept thinking about these questions. He loved spending more and more time alone at Mount Hira. Khadija would often send Fatima, their youngest daughter, with food and water to him. It was during one of these nights when no one was near him that an angel appeared before him. The Prophet was amazed by the sight of this angel. He couldn't believe his eyes. The angel then asked the Prophet to read. But how could the Prophet read when he had never gone to a school? I am not a reader, he said to the angel. Then suddenly, the angel took hold of him and squeezed him tightly. The angel said, again, read. I am not a reader, the prophet cried again. The angel then squeezed the prophet so hard that he thought that he would faint. And he said, read in the name of your Lord and cherisher who created man out of a clot of congealed blood. Read, and your Lord, who is the most generous, who has taught writing by pen, taught men which he knew not. The Prophet repeated the words with a trembling heart. Perplexed by his experience, Prophet made his way to home. As soon as he entered his house, he said to his wife, Wrap me up, wrap me up. He was trembling as he was, he said this. And she wrapped him up in a towel until his fear was gone. He explained to his wife what had happened. When he finished, he asked her if she thought he had gone mad. Allah forbid, she replied. He will surely not let such a thing happen. For you speak the truth. You are faithful in trust. You assist your fellow man. Then she went to her cousin, Warwa bin Nofal, who was old and blind. But he knew the scriptures quite well. He had translated them into Arabic. When she told him about what happened to her husband, he cried out, Holy! Holy! This is the Holy Spirit that came to Musa. He will be the prophet for his people. Tell him this and ask him to be brave at heart. The Prophet continued to receive revelations for the remainder of his life. It was memorized and written down by his companions on sheepskins. Slowly, Prophet started understanding the meanings of revelations. He realized that he was now responsible for spreading the message of Quran. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had been married to Khadija anha for 15 long years by now. She was the first person to accept Islam. She knew that her husband 
would speak only the truth and she trusted him. One day, Angel Jibreel salam taught the Prophet how to perform the wuzu. Then he taught the Prophet how to say the salah. When the Prophet learned this, he taught this to Khadija anha as well. From that day, they started to pray in their own house. Ali bin Abu Talib, the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was staying at their house, and he saw them praying together. He was only ten years old, and he was curious to know what they were doing. When he asked, the Prophet told him that they were offering their prayers or salah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the boy that Allah subhanahu wa taala had made him a prophet and revealed the Quran to him. The next day, Ali met the Prophet and said, I want to accept Islam and follow its teachings. The Prophet accepted this request gladly. Thus, Ali became the second follower of Islam after Khadija. They continued to pray together from that day onwards. The Prophet led the prayers and Ali would stand next to him Khadija stood behind them. Many days passed by and one day the angel appeared again to the Prophet. The angel informed that it was now time to call the people to Islam. He asked the Prophet to preach the message of Islam to the people. It was the dawn of a new era. The Prophet started calling people to Islam. He gave his full time attention in preaching people about Islam. Preaching Islam was not an easy job, but Khadija Razilla Anha supported her husband wholeheartedly. She gave up her entire fortune for the good cause of Islam. She got quite involved in her husband's work as well. She met people and talked to them about Islam. Slowly and steadily people realized that the Prophet was speaking the truth. They started joining Islam one by one. But not everyone liked what they were hearing, especially the Quraysh men. The Quraysh tribe were mainly the leaders of Makkah. Most of the rich men in Makkah belonged to the Quraysh tribe. They were scared that if people started following Islam, then they would no longer be feared and respected. They started treating the Prophet and his followers very cruelly. They threw garbage at the Prophet whenever he passed by, started beating those who was following the Prophet, and even chased some of them out of Makkah. Several kinds of ban were imposed on Muslims. They were not allowed to take part in their gatherings and refused to do business with them. One day, the Prophet was sitting on top of Hira mountain. He had been sitting there for a long time now. When he did not reach home at his usual time, Khadija started to worry about him. She asked one of the men to go and look for him in Makkah. But after a while, the man returned. He couldn't find the Prophet anywhere in Makkah. Khadija waited for some more time, but the Prophet didn't return. She decided to go and search for the Prophet herself. She carried some food and water with her. The Prophet had been in the company of Angel Jibreel salam. The Angel said to the Prophet, Your wife is on her way here. She has got food and water for you. When she arrives, tell her, that there will be a house made of pearls for her in paradise. Like the angel said, Khadija soon reached the cave. The Prophet saw that she was carrying food and water with her. Then the Prophet told her about the angel's message. Khadija calmly replied, May God's peace and blessings be upon you, Rasulullah. The Prophet had started gaining many more followers. When the Quraysh leaders saw this, they were very angry. They imposed social boycott on the Prophet and his family. Abu Lahab, 
The uncle of the Prophet was also the leader of the Quraysh in Makkah. He was a very evil man and the worst enemy of Muslims. He ordered a complete ban on the Prophet's family and their followers. No one in Makkah was allowed to buy or sell anything to them. They were not even allowed to talk to them. It was very difficult in those days for someone to live without the support of their tribe. For three long years, the Prophet labored quietly to deliver the message of God. Idol worship was deeply rooted among the people and the Prophet tried to convince as much as he could. After three years of struggle, he was only able to secure 30 followers. Even his companions had now started questioning his sanity. By now, his enemies had started plotting against the Prophet. The Prophet preached that everyone were equal in front of God and this challenged the authority of local priests. One day, they gathered together and decided to suppress the movement of Prophet. They decided that each family should take upon themselves the task of stamping out the followers of Islam. Each household started torturing its own members, relatives and slaves who were following the Prophet. The people were beaten, flogged and then thrown into the prison. The hill of Ramada and the place called Bata had now become scenes of cruel torture. Only the Prophet was left out because he had the protection of Abu Talib and Abu Bakr anhu. Then the priests tried to tempt the Prophet into joining their religion. For this, they sent Utba bin Rabi to meet the Prophet. O son of my brother, said the messenger, you are distinguished by your qualities, yet you have denounced our gods. I am here to make a proposition to you. I am listening to you, O son of Walid, said the Prophet. If you are willing to acquire riches, honors, dignity, then we are willing to offer you a fortune larger than what we have among ourselves. We shall make you our chief and we will consult everything with you. If you desire dominion, then we shall make you our king, said Utba. When Utba had finished, the Prophet said, Now listen to me, son of Walid. I am listening, replied Utba. The Prophet recited the first 13 verses of Surah Fusilat. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and explained about the glad tidings of paradise to anyone who believed in the one true God. The Prophet then reminded him about what had happened to the people of Ad and Tamud. When the Prophet had finished his recitation, he said to Udba, This is my reply to your proposition. Now take what course you find the best. When their plan to tempt the Prophet failed, they approached his uncle Abu Talib. The Prophet's uncle tried persuading the Prophet to stop preaching to the people. But the Prophet said, O oh, uncle, if they were to put the sun in my right hand, and the moon in my left hand and to stop me from preaching Islam, I would never stop. The Prophet, overcome by the thought that his uncle was willing to desert him, turned to depart from his home. But Abu Talib called out to the Prophet loudly. He asked him to come back. When the Prophet came back, Abu Talib told him, Say whatever you please. By the Lord, I shall not desert you forever. The priests from different tribes started publicly prosecuting the supporters of the Prophet. It was during this time that a Christian king named Al-Najashi was ruling Abyssinia. The Prophet had heard about the righteousness, tolerance and hospitality of this kind ruler. When the persecution became unbearable for the people, the Prophet advised them to emigrate to Abyssinia. Some 15 families emigrated to this country. 
in small groups to avoid detection. This is called the first hijra in the history of Islam. This happened during the fifth year of the Prophet's mission. The emigrants received a kind reception from the king and his people. They were soon followed by many others who suffered at the hands of the evil priests in Makkah. The number of people who emigrated soon reached hundred. When the priests heard about this, they were furious. They decided not to leave the emigrants in peace. They immediately sent two envoys to the king for bringing back all of them. When the envoys met the king, he summoned the poor fugitives and asked them what they had to say. Jafar, the son of Abu Talib and brother of Ali, then spoke for the exiles. O oh king, we were plunged in the depth of barbarism. We adored idols. We disregarded everything and we had no law. Then Allah raised a man among us who was pure and honest. He taught us to worship Allah and forbade us from worshipping the idols. He taught us to speak the truth and to be faithful. We believe in him and we have accepted his teachings. His followers were persecuted, forcing us to back into worship the idols again. When we found no safety in among them, we came to your kingdom, trusting us to save us from them. When the king heard his speech, he asked the envoy to return to their land and not to interfere with the immigrants. While his followers sought refuge in foreign lands, the Prophet continued his preaching against strict opposition. Some of them mocked at him and they asked for a sign. Then the Prophet would say, Allah has not sent me to work wonders. He has sent me to preach to you. But the priests persisted, didn't agree with him. They insisted that unless they saw sign, they would not believe in his Lord. The disbeliever used to ask, Why is he not showing any miracles like previous prophets? Because miracles had proved inadequate to convince, answered the prophet. Noah was sent with signs. Then what happened? Where was the lost tribe of Tamud? They refused to believe in Prophet Salih unless they showed a sign. Then the prophet caused the rocks to break and brought forth a living camel. He did what they asked for. Then what happened? In anger, the people cut the camel's feet and again dared the prophet to fulfill his threat of judgment. Eventually, they all lay dead in their beds the next morning. There are some 17 places in Quran in which the prophet is challenged to show a sign, but he gave all of them the same answer. After some time, the priest approached Abu Talib again and asked him to abandon his nephew. But the honorable man declared his intention to protect the prophet against any harm. Certain events forced the Quraysh to lift the ban on the Muslims. The prophet and his followers were allowed to return to Makkah after three long years. In the following year, his uncle Abu Talib passed away. He was a great supporter of the Prophet for many years. He had grown very sick and weak and he died soon after returning to Makkah. Khadija's health was not in great shape either. She had suffered great hardships. The food was scarce and instead of eating herself, she used to give all the food to her children and husband. Once the richest woman in Makkah spent her last few days as a poor. She passed away a few days after Abu Talib's death. Prophet had lost his most loyal supporters. He was heartbroken. He could hardly manage to keep his mind strong. He called that year the year of sorrow. Whenever he spoke of Khadija, he spoke of her with great love and fondness. Khadija's life is a source of great inspiration to believers, especially women. 
हर स्टोरी इज अ रिमाइंडर टू लिव अ पर्पजफुल लाइफ वी शुड रिमेंबर खदीजा एंड द होल फैमिली ऑफ प्रॉफिट इन अ प्रेयर्स फॉर देयर सेक्रीफाइस एंड डेडिकेशन मे अल्लाह बी प्लीज विद दैम ऑल दैट्स ऑल अबू नेक्स्ट टाइम आई विल टेल यू अनदर स्टोरी थैंक्स मा सलाम यूसुफ अंकल मे अल्लाह ब्लेस यू मा सलाम अबू आई विल सी यू सून नेक्स्ट टाइम मैंने कम है I will tell you more stories. Sure uncle, it was a really nice story. Thanks a lot uncle. You welcome my son. May Allah bless you. Ma salama. Ma salama uncle Yusuf.